Hey everybody, it's Amy from Magic and Light Collection. So today I have this image from Haley Warren Photography and uh, it's awesome. It's of a swan. I was so excited when she sent this to me because this is something that I don't often get to work on and it's a little bit magical and I like magic stuff. So, um, so here we go. I started on this image and the reason that I like it is because of the mood. I, it is underexposed, but I really, really love how dark the water is and just the, the mood in general. And so I kind of want to leave that alone and take my cue for processing from the, the, the mood of the image. I want to kind of keep it dark and moody. So I opened up the Vintage Spring Action Set and which you can find on the website at www.magicandlightcollection.com and I started looking through what I might want to do with this and the first thing that I wanted to do was go ahead and lighten up the swan itself I wanted to leave the the water dark but lighten up the swan now it was a little bit tedious and so I went ahead and did that before I started the tutorial and so here's what it looks like using the light brush and um, elements users you will just double click on your light brush with your vintage spring action set photoshop users you will find your light brush here on the spring brushes so you'll just click it and press play so i have already done that and it is a little bit tedious because i didn't want to overspill into the water and so there was a little bit of masking involved and um, just trying to constrain the light brush to the swan. And so let's look at the before. This is before light brush, after light brush, and you can see that it bright, really brightens up the swan quite a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of color. And I'm going to choose the brush on color brush and press play. Okay, so you can see that nothing happens and this is for a reason. I'm going to paint on the color. So I'm going to make sure that I have this black layer mask selected and choose a white brush. Right now a black foreground color is selected. Switch that to white. Make sure your brush tool is selected. And my brush opacity, I'm going to set to about 40%, which is a little bit high for um, brushing on color, but I want to be sure that I get all this color. And so you can see that I just brushed on color in the beak. This is before, after I brushed on a little bit color. I think it could handle just a little bit more. So we're going to click it a few more times. That's probably at about 100%. So I think that the swan looks pretty good. As far as color goes, I kind of want to make sure that she stays pretty white. Um, but I might just try this and go down really low here on the opacity and then hit it again with the brush. Just It looks like there's a little bit of color here in the head. So I'll just brush over that. Looks like there's some kind of coming down right here as well. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image so that I can run an action. I'm going to use one of the all-in-one actions. So I'm going to go to Layer, Flatten Image. Okay. So I think that I want to use All-in-One Rainy Day. I'm going to choose that one and press Play. And just let it run through. Let it do its thing. Okay, so you can see what happened here. Obviously, um, you know, some of them sometimes on some images can work in one click and you're done. Most of the time, 98% of the time, you're going to need to work within the action to make it correct. So we're just going to go through the layers here and look at what could be the problem. So what I see off the bat is that the water's a little bit dark, there's a little bit too much darkness in the swan, 
So the first thing, because I know these actions, um, is going to be Earth. This is going to be the culprit. So I'm going to click that off. Okay, so you can see by clicking that off, it greatly improves those problem issues. And that looks pretty good to me, um, but I do want to just go through and double check everything and see any other issues. So I'm going to start down here with sharper image. And the sharpness looks good. Rainy day. Rainy day looks good. Hmm. Maybe a little dark on the beak. Okay, we'll go back and fix that. Color boost. That looks good. We clicked off the earth layer, warm it up. Mm, I might leave, I'll leave warm it up on. Okay, so bleach, bleach looks good. We need that to keep that swan nice and white. Okay, contrast makes a big difference. So I think I think what we're going to do is come back and take a little bit of that contrast off the beak. But moving on, we do not need dark brush, so I'm going to delete it. In Photoshop, you can click on the layer and just press your backspace key, take it out. Photoshop Elements users, you can right click on the layer and choose Delete Layer. It'll ask you if you're sure, just press yes. We've already used the light brush. So I'm going to delete that as well. We don't need blush brush in this case, so we'll delete that. And we really don't need bright lights. Okay, so what we're left with is sharp brush, which I'll probably use later, and vintage, which is a layer that is hidden. If you want to go ahead and try this layer on any other images, you can just click the little eye button. Uh, we're not going to use it in this image, so I'll click it off and I'll delete it. Just in the interest of keeping things clean so I can see what I'm actually working with. So let's just check rainy day again. That looks good to me, except on the beak. So I'm going to choose this white layer mask. And since it's white, I'm going to choose a black brush. Make sure my brush tool is selected. Change my opacity probably to somewhere around 90%. And then I'm just going to carefully go in here and take off rainy day off of the beak. It darkened it a little bit too much and we really want to keep that color in there. Okay, let's just check again. You can see the beak is now unaffected and the rest of it looks pretty good. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this earth layer since we're not going to use that. And I also said I wanted to work on the contrast a little bit. So I actually like the contrast on every part of the image except for the beak. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with rainy day and brush it off. Okay, so there we go. Now if I took a little bit too much off, you can switch back to the white brush, brush tool, your layer opacity, and brush it back on. And I think I'm going to brush just a little bit back on. I took a little too much off here. Okay, so you see that gives a nice rich color. All right, let's see what we were working with before we ran Rainy Day. There's the image before. There's the image after. And I also said that I wanted to go ahead and use this sharp brush. It's a black layer mask, so we will choose a white foreground color with the brush tool. And um, I'm going to set this pretty high. So what I like about uh, sharpening water is that it makes it look very shiny. So you almost want to just over sharpen the water, shine it up a bit. I'm just going to hit it here with my brush tool. 
All right, so let's just maybe hit the beak once. Mm, maybe hit the eye, a couple of feathers here. Mm, take down the brush opacity, keep it around 50-ish, and then just hit these feathers for a little extra sharpening. Okay, so let's check it before we ran rainy day. There we go. After. I love that. It's nice and moody. Um, and so at this point, I love a good clean edit, but I also love a little bit of magic and a little bit of light. So we're going to go to the Magic Light set, which is an action pack with a mixture of actions and overlays. The reason I do this is because I want you all to get the most out of the products. And I feel like you can get the most by having a combination of actions and overlays. So we are going to navigate to the place we keep our Magic Light overlays. We're going to go to File, Place and you can see that we're here in my desktop so we'll just find magic light pack click on overlays and these are the magic light pack overlays i'm going to choose spotlight here but you can see there are a lot of choices so i'm going to click on spotlight and press place okay so it places spotlight on the image i'm going to go ahead and click the check mark and then I'm going to use my move tool up here to move spotlight. You can see it's covering up the image. This is the way it's supposed to be. You're going to have to mess with it a little bit. So I moved it there. I'm going to press the check mark. And then I'm going to come over to the blending modes right here. The only blending mode you're going to want to use with this overlay is screen. So I'm going to choose screen. And you can see now we have a nice interesting and magic light so uh, I'm gonna just mess with it I'm gonna size it over the swan until I feel like it's correct okay so narrow that just a little okay that looks okay to me all right so you can see that there are edges left over you'll need to remove the edges and I like to click this layer on and off to be able to see where the edges are because it's not always obvious so what, what I'm gonna do you can do this two ways you can use an eraser or you can use a layer mask I'm going to use an eraser because Photoshop Elements users can really only use an eraser. If you know how to create a clipping mask in Photoshop Elements, then you can do that instead of the layer mask, and that will give you the, the same effect. So let's just check it out with the eraser. Um, press OK when this message comes up. Change your eraser to 100% opacity. Go around the edges here make sure that you get those hard edges now if you do want to use a layer mask you can go Photoshop users can go to layer layer mask reveal all okay this will bring up a layer mask for you and then you can um, use a black foreground color choose your brush tool set it at 100% opacity and just go around these harsh edges. Click it on and off to see where any other harsh edges might be and I can see one right here. Okay. And I want to take the opacity of my brush down and kind of just blend this in a little bit. Use a little bit bigger brush here. Just hit this area. Okay, so you can see I have erased all of the harsh edges, and let's just take a look at before and that's after. But we want to make sure that this is pretty realistic, and I don't think 
I mean, depending on where this light is actually coming from, it probably would not fall directly on the right side of the face here. And so what I'm going to do with my um, layer mask and my brush tool selected at about 30% is just paint over the face where I don't, where I think that the head would be blocking this light from coming. Use a little bit bigger brush and just hit this area. I don't want to hit this area right here because I almost feel like it gives a little bit of backlighting. So I'm just going to avoid painting off in that area. I'm going to go down a little bit more and then just hit the neck right there. Just want to create a little shadow. Okay. So let's check again, see where we're at. And that looks pretty good to me. I don't think the light would be hitting right here. I think that would be blocked. So I want to be sure that I take it off right here. Okay. Take a little off right there. Okay, so if you feel like this effect is a little bit too strong, you can use the master opacity slider to lower the opacity to a level that you think fits the image and makes it look realistic because ultimately that's the goal. So I'm going to leave it at 92%. And so that's it. That's a pretty quick edit start to finish. Let's check the image before. That's what it looked like before when I, uh, after I did the light brush on the swan. And here we are with the after, before, and after. So I hope you found this useful. You can find all of our products including Vintage Spring and the Magic Light Action Pack at www.magicandlightcollection.com.